Hey there, welcome back. If this is your first time tuning in or coming across my channel, please make sure you tap the like button, subscribe below and tap that bell for notifications so you can be the first to get notified about the current market here in Denver. I'm Doug Sutton, your favorite Denver realtor. I'm a licensed broker here in the state of Colorado. Love making these videos to share with you each week, but I'd love even more to help you out with your real estate needs. So thinking about making a move in nine days or 90 days, be sure to reach out and give me a call, shoot me a text or send me an email and I'd be happy to help you make a smooth move here in Denver. Are you afraid that you're going to overpay for a home or you just won't get a good deal on the house that you're trying to buy? I totally get it. That's one of the biggest concerns, especially here in the Denver market. Everybody feels like they're overpaying for a house until maybe a few months down the road where they start to see that equity start to build up. But no one really knows right at the beginning. I mean, can you really tell? If you're getting a good deal on the house, how do you know if you're overpaying for a house? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I figure it out, how I try and find the value of the home. Uh, you may not have access to everything like the MLS, but you'll be able to ask someone that does have access these questions, or you might be able to find some of this information just by looking at online at you know some active listings. Number one, for starters, what is the goal here? The goal is to Try and understand the context of the offer. The goal is to try and understand and find the value of the home that you're interested in and you want to pursue or write a contract for. And you want to understand what's in the offer. Don't just go ahead and, and sign it blindly. Sign it and say, okay, let's go submit it. You know, look at the offer, look what you're signing. There's some important things in there, like some dates and deadlines. Make sure you go through that. Make sure you read it by your, you know, at least read it for yourself. Don't just sign it blindly and off you go because it's a big commitment. You want to know what you're getting yourself into. The next thing is you got to look at the price ranges for the homes in that area and just make sure that this home kind of aligns with that first. When you go look at comparable homes, you kind of start by trying to figure out the type of buyer that this home might be for. For example, is this home in a 55 plus community, it's a ranch style home with no stairs, main floor, main floor living. You know, is it that type of home with that type of buyer? Or is it a, a two story traditional home in the suburbs in a good school district? Uh, is it looking for a family with kids? Is it is that the type of buyer for this home? So just kind of identify the essence and, and who this home might be for. So that's gonna help you understand and when you're looking at the comparables in the neighborhood it'll just help make the picture clear also you need to look at the number of rooms and not just the bedrooms and bathrooms look at all the rooms a lot of homes uh, you know some have a family room and a dining room some have two family rooms some have a family room and a loft a finished basement unfinished basement so look at all the rooms in the home not just the bedrooms and bathrooms. You want to look at the square footage, the year the home was built, and the condition of the home and the amenities within the home and maybe right outside the home. Very important. Ask yourself, does this home need work? Is it a turnkey home? Do, are the other homes that I'm looking at, do they have wood floors like this home does or is it carpet everywhere? granite countertops or that builder grade laminate. Have they updated the kitchen? Uh, there's a lot of things you can ask yourself and look at and see just by looking at the pictures online of the homes. Second thing I like to do, I like to draw a radius around the home. Start by looking at other homes that are actively for sale. Kind of make sure that this one aligns with, with the rest of them that are you know comparable in reason. Uh, and then I like to start adding pendings or under contracts and then some sold homes as well. For the sold homes, I like to go back on maybe 45 to 60 days. Sometimes in this current market, we'll go back even further because right now we're seeing a lot of price reductions and pullback in, in pricing. We saw a lot of the appreciation that the homes got this year. We saw that at the, at the beginning of the year and with everything going on with the rates going up, seeing a lot of pullback in pricing, not huge significant amounts, but definitely a lot of price reductions. So you want to maybe go back a little bit further at the sold homes, especially now, maybe a couple months, three, four months, go back to April or May, 
kind of when things started started to change. Another thing you really need to do, and I like to do is look at all the pictures online. Right now, you everything's online. You can see the size of the home, the square footage of the home, and click through the pictures because that's really going to help give you an idea of the condition of the home. That is a really important thing to do is to click through the pictures. After we've done that, then really the next step is to evaluate your options. Look at the homes that, that recently went under contract, the ones that have recently sold, or in this case, maybe a few months back. You know, try and dial that in and, and be as specific as you can. If it's a 2,200 square foot home, you know, make sure you're not pulling homes that are 3,000 square feet. If it has a finished basement, try and pull homes that have a finished basement that are very close in square footage, you know, condition, well, not necessarily condition, that'll help help you decide where the value is and what the price is where you should be at when offering on that home. But just be aware of, of your options and look at all the homes and make sure you ask your agent for that data so they can you can see what's going on they may be kind of surprised because not a lot of folks will will ask to see all this information but ask them they should be able to, to share those that information with you you should be able to see the, the listing photos even on the past homes that have sold uh, the photos are usually up there for for quite a while so what does this all mean when you're writing an offer and, and trying to purchase a home and you want to make sure that you're getting a good deal or you're, you're really trying to find the true value of the home. What I like to, to think or, or tell people is that if you're paying about what, you know, two, three, four of the other really, really comparable homes have recently sold for, then you're pretty much confirming that that's the, the value of this particular home in this neighborhood, in this area. If the home is listed and they're trying to push that value, if it's more expensive, let's say we're, you know, it's a $500,000 home and that's what the other comparables are saying that it sold for, very similar condition, but this particular home, it's listed for, for 535 or 540, then they're trying to push it and the appreciation really, it hasn't gotten there right now, maybe in the, market we came out of that that would have worked it probably would have worked but right now that would not work if you do that you're definitely buying at the top maybe a little bit into the future and it's going to take you longer to start building that equity Every, everyone's going to catch up with you first before you start building equity so don't make that purchase don't make that offer and if you do you have to be okay with you know what what the future may hold and, and what may come you know we don't have a crystal ball so we really can't tell you for sure what's going to happen. If you decide to kind of push value a little bit, you have to be okay with, with, what, with what may come down the road. Now, if you're able to get that home, you know, under list price, if they've done a price reduction, maybe they started a little high and they've made a couple price reductions and you've looked at the comparables and all the other comparables say that this home is about 500,000 and, and you're able to pick it up for you know, 480, 485, 475, maybe 490, then chances are you're, you're getting a, a, a good deal. Maybe not a really good deal, but you're buying it a little bit lower than what the other comparable sales have sold for. So you may be walking right into, you may be buying it with, with a little bit of equity. And if you do, that's a great way to start out your your home ownership. Right now we're seeing a lot of overpriced homes on the market and that's because they're not really looking backwards so much when they're trying to decide their price. I mean they are but they're not. They're, they're saying oh my neighbor's home just sold for 500 so I want to sell mine for 535 or 525 and right now unless it's a very special circumstance or very special home chances are that home will be sitting on the market and after weeks or a month or so, you're gonna start seeing those price reductions. That home gets stigmatized, people wondering why it's on the market so long. And had they priced it right in the beginning, probably would have done better than, than if they started out overpricing the home. Now that you've seen this video, hopefully that helps you understand the value of when you're trying to purchase a home, how to find value in a home, 
if you can find a home that was overpriced that's been on the market for a while and they've started doing those price reductions and it's a home that you really like chances are you can get a really good deal on that home because after that seller has been on the market for quite a while the pain and frustration of having all these showings and having to keep the, the house really clean because you never know when a showing is going to get scheduled and they're having to reduce the price they're frustrated chances are by the you know if you come around and you're ready to write an offer on that home they may accept that that lower offer because they're just ready to get get this deal over with so you can find a home that's been on the market for a while and it's the perfect home for you and you really like it you're not just don't just buy it to buy it but it's the home for you that's the home you're probably going to get the really good deal on so bottom line you just need to be aware of what's going on ask questions do your own research don't just depend on someone to tell you what the value is or what you should pay or what something's worth a lot of resources out there a lot of a lot of information is online do your own due diligence do your own research so that you can be part of that conversation and really help try and find the value in the home that you're wanting to purchase uh, and that's why when you go to sell your home it's really important to hire someone that's going to be honest with you even up front, even if it's the type of information you may not want to hear, it's a lot less painful to hear it at the beginning so you can set expectations correctly um, rather than being misled and having to kind of chase the market backwards. It's never any fun and it's super frustrating for everyone involved. So can't really underprice a home, but you can definitely overprice a home. Set the right price in the beginning, you'll get a lot of attention with the buyers, I guarantee it. So, now that you've watched this video, you are now in a better position to go out there, look for a home, write a nice offer on that home, and hopefully find yourself a great deal. Hey, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next week. Be happy.